Beautiful day in Sydney. Breeze coming out of the northeast. The cricket ground under blue skies. The breeze gusting between 13 and 19. Coming down from the Paddington end. Cronin will be kicking off into this slight breeze. And there it is, the preliminary final for 19 under, uh, 1983 underway. And it's Taz Batiri tackled just outside the 22 line. Pittman going up in that tackle in number 10 was Hilditch. Over the top was Bugden. Now it's Steve Mortimer, Jeff Robinson. Robinson taken by three Parramatta tacklers. Sterling missed him, but the uh, other three didn't. Kenny, Cronin and Ray Price. Now it's back to Chris Mortimer. Breeze at his back. And he sends it down to Paul Taylor. Taylor throws the dummy to Williams and then takes the tackle. 12 metres on the Parramatta side of halfway. Williams. Sterling. Sharp. Johnston, Pittman and Robinson driving him back a good five metres. Kenny. Kenny getting a pass away for Mayers, and Mayers has his arms tied up. He couldn't get it inside to Ella. Tackler was Steve Folks. Mayers, Mayers uh, has sunk to the ground after playing the ball. It's been kicked through to Chris Mortimer. His left knee heavily taped. He has one of the three Mortimer brothers. They're all under a cloud this week, and we've read and heard about this game for the last seven days, and I just wonder if, in fact, that... Uh, the team that does uh, lose uses as an excuse the fact that they took the field with so many injured players. Steve Mortimer, short ball for Michael Pittman, and he's taken by Hilditch and Sharp. Steve Mortimer, blindside for the kick, and it's got around behind them. Taylor, Taylor did very well. Growth takes it down the touchline, five metres into Canterbury's area. That was a, a brilliant piece of play by Paul Taylor, who gave this ball to Steve Sharp play right on the halfway and there's Taylor now in a dummy half Ray Price a short ball for him and uh, he's been able to free himself from a couple of tackles and that player is injured it's uh, Billy Johnston out through Taylor it's gone to Cronin a short uh, pass to Ella Ella taken by Gary Hughes and Tony Armstrong they're on the Canterbury 32 meter line Sterling Hilditch now Hilditch takes it up Around the legs, Johnston. Robinson over the top with John Coveney. Played back to Bugden. Given to Sterling. The kick by Sterling. And the pursuit taken by Armstrong for Canterbury Bankstown. He's lost the ball. Six more tackles, says the referee. Played by Chris Mortimer. And a penalty to Canterbury. That's for two markers against Parramatta. Yes, and that's one of the things that referee Kevin Roberts is uh, very strict upon. It's any infringements in the play the ball area. How do you see it going, Max Krillich? Oh, well, Ray, I think both sides have uh, shown their act already by kicking the ball. That's, uh, that's typical of uh, both teams, get the ball down there, particularly Canterbury. They've got to put the ball down there and keep the pressure on the Parramatta fellows because uh, that's one way to ups upset them. And uh, there's been some very good defence already and a couple of very clever things done by young Taylor and Mayer. So we're in for a very good game here. Oh, look at that hit by Hilditch. He's hurt himself, though. Hilditch has hurt himself. He's uh, called to the bench. Chris Mortimer tackled on the halfway. Well, that's one of the reasons that Ron Hildich was brought into the side to, uh, to shorten up the Canterbury attack. But I think he's done himself a lot of damage here. He doesn't look good. As a matter of fact, the, uh, the trainers called for him to be replaced. So, a huge hit by Hildich, but he's come out of it second best. Steve Mortimer, realising that he's playing a team with only 12 members. Taylor has done well. He got through the front line. Johnston was the man who missed him. Played by Taylor, forward, and he gains another five, six, ten metres. He's had a big start to the game, the little fullback. Now it's Edge. Now through Cronin to Mayers. Oh, I'm just looking at Hilditch as the play progresses to the showground side, and Bugden 
Couldn't slide that pass to Kenny. Well, Peter, Peter Wynn's come to the sideline. I'm sure that Hillich is going to leave the field and Wynn will take his place. The bomb by Taylor. Uh, they're all on side, the Eels. Raked down by Sterling. Dived on by Canterbury. That's Steve Mortimer. Well, they don't want to rush a replacement on Canterbury position, I know, but uh, uh, in situations like that, it may just well be that it's pins and needles and that arm might come good after two or three minutes. Chris Mortimer taking a heavy hit there by Mayers and Price. Here's uh, Pittman going back to the centre of the ground and again Price cuts him down. Away goes Coveney now, across the ground, taken by Edge, Bugden and Mayers. Players just beyond the Canterbury 32 metre line, centre field. As Mortimer puts the kick in, Brad Williams has turned around by it. That's a great kick by Stevie Mortimer. Tremendous kick. Finding touch just inside the Parramatta 22 line. Well, Hilditch is getting into this scrum, but he doesn't appear to have any feeling in that right arm. Scrum win to Parramatta, through Ella to Cronin. Cronin holds Peter Mortimer at bay, he stands, offers it, finds Price. Price takes it out to the 22 and further. Well, we saw and him. able to get the pass away to Taylor, on to Cronin, now to Kenny. Kenny getting across the ground. Peter Mortimer made a good tackle. Sorry, Bill. Yes, we saw an example there of what Mick Cronin can do if he's allowed to stand in tackles. He'll get that ball away to supports, and uh, the two Canterbury centres have got a huge dog job today. Andrew Farrer and Peter Mortimer to make sure they put Cronin to the ground with the ball. Out to Kenny now. On the showground touchline is Cronin getting away from Gary Hughes, picking up Eric Groth, who's gone into touch. Back on the Parramatta 32 metre line. Groth into touch. Cronin. Getting that ball down to the big winger, but the touch judge ruling that he put his foot on the line. Mortimer defeated. One by, well, Canterbury had it behind the hooker's legs, but then it came back to Parramatta and Kenny and Taylor worked. Mortimer takes Taylor. And uh, Roberts all but blew his whistle. I thought he was going to give a penalty to Parramatta. It's with Cronin and uh, going high on him is Folks. Realising that Cronin's already been able to stand and offload Bugden. Bugden up towards the halfway line now. Canterbury got to start to uh, concentrate on the match and move up in defence. They're standing and waiting for Parramatta. Mayers is the dummy half. Through to Sterling. On to Cronin. Price on his outside. This is Price getting through. But uh, again, Peter Mortimer makes a valuable tackle. Played by Ray Price. Cronin. And a penalty inside the five against the Bulldogs. The kick is right in front. 38 metres out. Cronin will kick for goal. No score after eight minutes of the preliminary final. Ron Hilditch still receiving attention from trainer Alf Richards. Maybe you're right, Graham Hughes. He seems to be able... It seems as though he's getting more movement into it now. Well, quite often those sort of hits do come off. The, the defender comes off second best, and I'm quite sure it's just one of those instances where it's uh, he's had his shoulder uh, jarred, and it's just pins and needles. Certainly causing a lot of concern. Both Parramatta trainers have been out to him and asked the question, and I see one of the trainers coming across to talk to the Parramatta doctor as Cronin's kick goes wide. Uh, Chris Mortimer has lost the ball in goal, but behind him, and he's taken by Sterling and Edge, out on the 10-metre line. Played by Chris Mortimer. Across it comes now for Andrew Farrer. Oh, Bugden got underneath him and hit him hard. Sharp's in the tackle with him, but uh, Farrer plays the ball now. Back to Johnston, and this man is a Taz Batiri. Hilditch in that tackle with Ray Price. Played back to Billy Johnston. Away to Gary Hughes. A short ball for John Coveney, but he ran into Cronin and Mayers. No score. Johnston firing it back for the kick to Chris Mortimer. The ball going down the centre of the ground between winger and full back. And it's with Brad Williams. Williams starts his flight upfield. Ooh, ran into the shoulder of Stephen Folks and hit the deck. Played back to Sterling now. Across for Taylor. 
Taylor is about five metres short of the halfway line. Both of these teams have had a common problem in the last few weeks, and that problem has been a lack of sting in their defence. There hasn't been a lot of authority, but today there's no doubt it's something that the coaches have stressed because some of these tackles are bone jarrers. This man's having a big game. Ray Price again standing and getting it back for Kenny. Kenny tackled by Billy Johnston, and Sterling has gone into dummy half. Hilditch calls it to the right. A bad pass from Hilditch to Cronin. That would be a knock-on in my book. It is against Michael Cronin. Well, that would come from, I would think, that injury that uh, Hilditch is carrying. He tried to throw a pass from left to right, but it was a horror ball to give anybody. And so the scrum is going down just on the Canterbury side of the halfway, but again, Parramatta have won it. This is Sterling on the open side, held by Folks. Played back to Ray Price, on to Paul Taylor. Now Stephen Sharp, taken by Gary Hughes. And that was the second scrum that Parramatta have won against the field, and that's an ominous sign for Canterbury Banks down. When you've got the ball and the loose head going into the scrum, you've just got to come up with the ball. Taylor, down to Growth, coming away from his right wing to work on the left of the ground. And Growth is tackled by Farrah. Ball played back to Taylor, Edge comes on the blind side. Again, Andrew Farrah makes the tackle. Taylor, Sterling, Cronin. Coming up is Bugden uh, on the left. Mayers was on the right, but Cronin sold the dummy and went himself. But the Canterbury defence bringing down Johnston and Batiri. This is the last tackle for Parramatta. Another shocking pass from Hilditch. He's got no feeling in that arm. And uh, the ball has come down to Peter Mortimer. And he'll play it on the halfway line. Well, we've seen two examples of uh, Ronnie Hilditch trying to pass. And uh, both times he's thrown terrible passes. Here's Farrah making a, a big run down in front of the Brawongal stand patrons. There's no doubt that Hilditch is doing, trying to do the right thing by his side by staying on the field, but he's just going to have to improve on some of those passing performances if he's going to remain. Penalty to Canterbury. That's interfering with the man playing the ball. And Tony Armstrong will take Canterbury's first shot for points. Yes, and a very important kick for Tony Armstrong because this is just about his best distance. He cannot put the ball dead from here normally. He is not a long kicker. Uh, and I'm quite sure that Canterbury will be, will be looking for him to try and do just that. That's Dr. Peter Manolaris uh, looking at Ron Hilditch. Well, it's not just the doctor on that occasion. Uh, Ronnie Hilditch himself has got to make up a decision whether, in fact, he's helping the team or hindering them. Armstrong is 10 metres in from touch. He's 35 metres up. About a 45 degrees angle that hasn't got the length and Steve Eller takes it in the field of play. Yes, and that's going to be one of the problems that Canterbury Bankstown could have in this match. Mick Cronin's an excellent goal kicker, can kick the ball 40 or 50 metres. Armstrong just hasn't got that distance. Kenny made a long run before flick passing to Eller. And Eller is tackled about three metres on his side of the halfway. From Growth to Sterling. Uh, cutting out Bugden. Picking up Cronin. Now to Sharp. Back inside to Hilditch. Hilditch gets a pass away satisfactorily to Edge. Edge to Price. Price to Mayers. Mayers is outside the 45 metre line. He's over the halfway line. And Paul Mayers is uh, brought down by John Coveney. Together with Steve Folks. Ball played back to Brad Williams. Spun to the right to Taylor. To Sterling. Now to Bugden. Bugden straight up the centre. Getting a pass back. It'll be taken by Sharp. Sharp. Gets the pass to Mayers. Mayers to Cronin. Juggles it. Takes it uh, down to the 32-metre line. Throws a pass infield. And Folks picks it up for Canterbury. But it's offside against Folks. A penalty to Parramatta. He's ruled that that pass from Cronin came off a Canterbury hand. Back to Folks, who was offside. Replay of the incident. Rank Arena replay. Cronin getting this pass around the back door. And... Uh, Referee Roberts ruled that it must have come off a Canterbury player. Looking at that replay, you wouldn't think so. I agree, if that is your point of view. Here's the tap taken by Sterling. Brad Williams centres it and is uh, picked off by Billy Johnston. First tackle for Parramatta. They're 15 metres out from the Canterbury line. Sterling to Sharp. Sharp to Bugden. Bugden to Mayers. Mayers uh, stands. Gets it to Ray Price. Price, can he get it away? But it's a penalty to Canterbury. It was a deliberate forward pass. And that was the tap move. We saw the news against Manly Warringah at Brookvale Oval in the first round with such tremendous success when uh, Price scored a try virtually under the posts. Yes, on this occasion, I think you'll see where Canterbury's not moving up a complete straight line. Jeff Robinson and the men inside him should have been up there in line with his counterparts and there would have been no gap whatsoever. 
So Canterbury Bankstown withstand that uh, attacking challenge that Parramatta were mounting. And Andrew Farrow finds touch 11 metres short of the halfway. The Manly team watching on. As uh, the ball goes out to Farrah, and he's met by Price, Mayers and Edge. Johnston sees some vacant space and takes it. And gets away from, oh, got away from Bugden. And Mayers it is who makes the tackle just into Parramatta's area. Now to Steve Mortimer. Gary Hughes cuts out Jeff Robinson. Picks up Michael Pittman out wide. And uh, Ella and Bugden bring him down. Tasbateri coming across the ground now straightening and Edge and Hilditch are there to make the tackle. 32 metres from the Parramatta line. Steve Mortimer, Gary Hughes, run around, cut out pass. Farrah's got it. Farrah now, drawing that uh, Parramatta defence, calling his winger in field, but a nice tackle by Sharp. Out to Steve Mortimer, there goes the bomb. Now Kenny's back there for it, and up he goes, he's put it down. Canterbury, they can score a try here. Chris Anderson, can he offload? Yes, he's found Coveney. But Gross got Coveney, five metres out from the Parramatta line. Parramatta just took a giant risk there. Players not picking the ball up because they're offside. They nearly cost themselves six instead of two. No doubt in my mind, Ray, that they were, uh, would have been far better to have given away a penalty in front of the posts. It's out now to Folks, and Folks is taken by the Parramatta defence. And let's keep our eye on Chris Mortimer here. He's positioning himself behind the play, the ball looking for a run off either Gary, Gary Hughes or Steve Mortimer. That's Michael Pittman now, taken to ground by Sterling and Bugden. Played back to Johnston, given to Gary Hughes, then to John Coveney, reels out of the first line of defence, but Edge has him. And that's tackle number five for Canterbury. Watch for the bomb from this fellow. It's the, uh, the kick by Mortimer. Kenny's up above them. Oh, who's come down with it? Taylor. Little Taylor's come out of it with the ball. Kenny was right above the pack, but Taylor was down there like an Australian rules rover, picking up the crumbs, and Cronin, Cronin gallops into a big space, and he's uh, tackled by Peter Mortimer, who's made a couple of very good tackles. Played back to Eric Groth. Now to Sterling, run around for growth, and here he comes at Billy Johnston. One's gone. Oh, he got a pass to Brad Williams, and uh, he couldn't take it. Folks has the ball for Canterbury. Beating Sterling. Taken by Edge and by Cronin. Well, this game is being played at a fast and furious pace, and with this heat combined, I'm sure the players are going to get very tired. No score on the board. Gary Hughes, met by Ray Price. Playing the ball back to Chris Mortimer. Now it's with Bateri, and again Price makes the tackle. Spiked, I would think, by some suggestions that he shouldn't be in the side. Penalty to Parramatta, incorrect playing of the ball. In fact, holding on to the marker is the ruling by Kevin Roberts. Both men in the play of the ball must not come in contact with one another. Well, and uh, here it is on the Rank Arena replay. The ball is played by Taz Bateri, then he walks forward and gently takes the marker out of it. Well, it's an area that uh, referee Kevin Robbins is very consistent on. Uh, he won't stop doing it. He'll persist for the full 80 minutes should the players continue to infringe in the play of the ball. So, 17-minute marker. First half, no score. Cronin finding touch. 32 metres from the Canterbury line. This big crowd tense as they witness the battle of these two sides for the right to go on and meet Manly next Sunday in the big one. Ball played by Bugden, given from edge to Price, short ball for Hilditch. Hilditch is tackled, and it's Mayers in a dummy half now. Mayers to Price, now to Sharp. Sharp held by Robinson, Gary Hughes and Taz Bateri. Bugden running as a decoy in 13. It's a couple of crosses before they find growth, and Bateri is there to pull him down on the Canterbury 22 line. Played back to Sharp, now to Sterling. Sterling puts the bomb up. Now, let's see, Armstrong's getting underneath it. Up they go, and Armstrong has taken it well. Playing at 15 metres out from his line, Steve Mortimer decides to go for a run, and he comes in contact with um, Hilditch, and Edge is doing a lot of defensive work again today. Gary Hughes to Michael Pittman. Mayers is out there together with uh, Ray Price and Sharp. Yes, and unfortunately, Canterbury again not supporting the ball carrier. Pittman taking it up on his by himself. Chris Mortimer kicking at 
every opportunity is the Canterbury side with the use of the breeze in the first half. It's not a strong wind, but uh, very much the same tactics being used by Canterbury as they did against the Dragons. So it's played by Williams. It's gone from Taylor to Sterling. Here's Kenny. Kenny getting in amongst that heavy traffic and uh, being held down. Plays it now back to Sterling. Now it's with Price, back to Sterling. Now Mayers, and that's a good tackle. Good anticipation shown by Taz Batiri. Cross to the right to Ron Hilditch, and Hilditch in the centre of the ground is hit and hit hard. Coveney and Batiri launching the defence, and now it's with Taylor. Taylor puts in a kick, a big one, going down towards the touchline. Armstrong has to hurry. He's uh, raked it back in field. And my word, didn't he do well then, uh, young Armstrong? It was a ball that looked like it was going to find touch, certainly about 10 metres out from the Canterbury line. But he's able to be, uh, been able to run the ball back almost to the quarter. Mortimer, his brother Chris in possession, taken by Kenny and Edge. And play is now down on the Canterbury 22 in front of the MA Noble corner. It's with uh, Steve Mortimer, and he's taken by Sterling and Sharp. Well, the game's been going for 20 minutes, and while we've seen some kicking for the sideline and some bombs, we're still yet to see either either side produce a judicious kick, such as a grubber kick or a chip over the top. And uh, as the players are starting to get tired, let's look for Steve Mortimer and Peter Sterling to produce that tactic. I'd like to look for the size to seven with some sort of a pattern. Canterbury are throwing the ball from one side of the field and back to the other, but I'd like to see their forwards try and settle the play down and allow the back line more room to move. Andrew Farrow to take the line kick. Uh, it's not a bad kick, actually, for uh, the position from where he took it. And the tap has taken six metres inside the uh, Canterbury half, and it's John Coveney who's going to play it just into Parramatta's area. Playing it back to Billy Johnston, now to Mortimer. Cut out pass uh, on Hughes to Pittman. And Parramatta's defence surging in, Sharp, Mears and Price. From Johnston to Robinson. Robinson taken by Edge and Price again. He uh, got through the tackle of Sterling. It's out to Mortimer, now to Gary Hughes, and here's Andrew Farrah, but uh, he's parceled up. That's exactly what Graham Hughes was talking about there. We saw Canterbury working to a pattern. They took the play the balls two or three to the centre and then brought play back blindside. Uh, that's a tactic that many you, many sides have used against Parramatta and uh, with a lot of success. Hitting the ball to the centre, then back blindside. Steve Mortimer shaping the kick and then not and giving the pass to brother Peter. And it's a scrum to go down midway, 22 halfway. Parramatta's into the ground. No score, 21 minutes gone. I'm just wondering, with no score after 20-odd uh, after minutes, how important the first try is going to be in this match, if it's going to be a confidence booster for, the, for those that scored and a, uh, a confidence sapper for the team that is scored against. So that scrum feed went straight through, and here's the next attempt, successful for Parramatta. It's with Steve Eller. Uh, he got the pass to Brad Williams, and then, oh, gee, a dangerous pass. I thought Peter Mortimer might have snuck in for an intercept there, but Cronin's played the ball. It's out with Taylor. Now Steve Eller. Eller comes to Gary Hughes and is taken by that player 32 metres out from the Parramatta line played back to fullback Paul Taylor who dummies to Ray Price comes across the ground out to Michael Cronin Cronin darts into a gap he uh, passes and cuts out Mayers finds Sterling Sterling has Mayers still with him floats it back into centre field finds Paul Taylor Taylor's taken play down to the Canterbury 32 metre line Cronin is the man who's really causing Canterbury most trouble it's out to Sharp now Sharp uh, turns, gets it to Brad Williams, inside the 22 line, around another, here comes a birthday present and a half, oh yes, how would you like to celebrate your 26th, better than that, I don't think so for Brad Williams, Parramatta taking the first try, per medium of some brilliant attack, which was really inspired Brian back Ball. on the 32 Brian metre line, the other end of the ground Brian by Williams. Michael Cronin, here's the Rank Arena replay, as Steve Sharp took the tackle, stood and popped it back to Brad Williams. And here's Brad Williams celebrating his 26th today, getting around one and out of a second before plunging in in front of the Bradman stand patrons. Yes, and again, Canterbury paying the penalty for not keeping a straight line of defence. You must move up outside as well as inside. They didn't on that occasion. And there was a huge gap there for Williams, and all he had to do was head straight for the try line. Brad Williams, the Parramatta wing three-quarter, called into the side to replace David Lydiard, picks up the first try, and Parramatta lead by four points to nil. Cronin's converted, 
and the Eels lead the Bulldogs in the preliminary final by six points to nil. Parramatta six, Canterbury no score. Ron Hilditch has come from the field and Peter Wynn is on in jumper 19. Gary Hughes has uh, dispensed with the headgear as the kickoff goes to Ray Price. Price comes outside the quarter line. He's having a big game, Price, today. He's made a tremendous amount of tackles and he's made a couple of breaks. Edge giving it to Taylor, and Taylor is brought down by Coveney. Well, we've seen in the past the importance of possession in semi-final football, and at this stage the scrums are four to nil in favour of Parramatta, and, and that statistic in itself has got to be causing Ted Gossip some concern. Ella, Price can't take it, and referee Roberts has ruled the knock-on in the scrum ten metres on the Parramatta side of the halfway. Well, outside of Michael Patterson, there's probably not a, a player who's had as much bad luck as Peter Wynn, who's packing down in there with his right knee heavily strapped. Out now to Gary Hughes, on to Peter Mortimer. He gets a pass away, six more tackles, it's with Chris Mortimer, and uh, he's taken by Brett Kenny. Played back now to Tony Armstrong. Players midway between the 22 and halfway, Parramatta's into the ground, and Andrew Farrer is put down by the Eels' defence of Mayers and Wynn. Played back to Johnston, and now with the ball is Batiri, who's met by Sharp and Wynn. Played back again now for the dummy half to give it to Steve Mortimer. He puts the bomb up, Taylor's underneath it. Mortimer's coming through, but Taylor, Taylor did very well, so did Steve Mortimer. Line drop out to restart the action. Frank Arena replay of the Steve Mortimer bomb. Paul Taylor getting under it nicely, and then hit immediately by Steve Water. Line drop out for Michael Cronin. I'm a little bit surprised that Jack Gibson has thrown Peter Wynn into this match. I'm not doubting his ability, but uh, he had uh, other forwards that I think most people would have thought he'd use before Peter, who's in that tackle up the top in jumper number 19. Fellows like Stan Jurd and uh, John Muggledon rush to mine. Oh, Andrew Farrer is uh, taken low by Bugden. Mayers came over the top, and Edge is in just about every tackle. Played back to Billy Johnston across the ground. A dummy on the inside, given outside for Michael Pittman to be tackled. And it's uh, played back to Johnston, running with it to the blind is Coveney, pulled down by Kenny, and also Peter Wynn. Played just outside the Parramatta 22, Parramatta 6, Canterbury no score. Gary Hughes holds up a pass, gives it to Andrew Farrer, and he's brought down by Steve Sharp and by Jeff Bugden. That's tackle number five for Canterbury. Steve Mortimer from dummy half gets a little kick in, but it's too big, and it'll be a scrum with a Parramatta feed just outside their quarter line. Yes, well, I don't know if there's much value in that sort of a kick anyhow. The maximum game would have been a 15-metre game, giving Parramatta the feed. I think in those situations, the bomb up in goal looking for a line dropout return is the best tactic. Scrum won by Parramatta, recalled by referee Roberts. Now he's going to try and straighten this scrum up. It was facing touchline to touchline. Now it's right. It's fed by Sterling. It's coming. Well, it's locked in there. And uh, those halfbacks are standing over the top of it. There it is, out and won by Parramatta. And Sterling dives on it. Max Krillich, rotten luck for Ron Hilditch. Yeah, bad luck. He had a gallant effort to stay on the field, though, Ray. Ella! Ella! He's made a big run, Ella! Up to the halfway line, chased by Tony Armstrong and pulled down. Sorry, Max Krillich. Yes, uh, but that's what's happening here. I think Parramatta dictating the trend here. They're, the Canterbury boys can't put the uh, Parra guys to the ground, and, uh, and then the uh, Parra guys are backing up. So uh, it's looking very ominous for the uh, Bulldogs here that uh, Parramatta are getting well on top. Peter Wynn standing in a tackle and giving it down to Eric Groth. And uh, Groth is held over there by Anderson and Armstrong. Played and from Ella to Cronin to Sterling, now Mayers. Mayers charging up at them and held by four Canterbury players. Sufficient testimony, I would think, to the ability of uh, Paul Mayers. Coach Jack Gibson, flanked by Ron Massey, his team coordinator. And now it's played back to Ray Price and given to Michael Cronin, who puts the kick up. Peter wins the man going through with Steve Ella. Chris Mortimer, oh, that's a good take by Chris Mortimer. That's a tremendous take. And uh, Ray Price rakes at the ball and the referee restarts the tackle count. Chris Anderson playing it inside the 22 line. Steve Mortimer 
gets the pass inside to his captain Anderson and Anderson ooh, Price launched himself at Anderson it was like a, a, a missile he took off and hit him with everything that he had and here's Canterbury putting it down Mayers picks it up they'll stretch it very quickly Palamata oh growth has left it behind him and they're into touch Canterbury a couple of little exchanges involving Eric Growth in the last two minutes uh, has given the indication that he's not as snappy as uh, he was in the last encounter with Canterbury scrum to be fed by Sterling Paddington Hill corner it's in and uh, it's coming out through the Parramatta pack but now Mortimer's gone into the scrum after it he'll penalise no he's penalised Parramatta he's penalised Parramatta for getting down in the scrum and it's a penalty on the Canterbury 32 metre line for Andrew Farrell fumbles six two now Parramatta have put it down six times Canterbury twice yes of course while Parramatta do make uh, more fumbles than most teams we should also remember the fact that they move the ball more than most teams you know they put together and string together more passes and obviously the more passes you make the more chances you have to drop the ball well there's Canterbury putting one down Gary Hughes scooping it back and the referee has ruled a knock on I just want to point out, again, for the benefit of some of the people watching the telecast, uh, a lot of people have written from Victoria in particular, uh, explaining that they don't know the rules all that well. If the ball is projected or propelled towards your opponent's uh, try line, it's deemed as a knock-on, though you might even have your back to that line. It doesn't matter. Here's the penalty from the scrum going to Parramatta. Feet across is the indication from referee Roberts. Cronin two metres into Canterbury's area. He'll kick into the Paddington Hill corner. Breeze at the moment is turning around a little. In fact, one of the forecasters suggested yesterday that the team running with the Breeze in the first half could have it again in the second as we find Sharp trying to hit it up to the Canterbury 22 and he's playing very strongly, Steve Sharp as he gets up now and plays it back to Ray Price and off to Paul Taylor now to Jeff Bugden Bugden is tackled in the center of the ground about 20 meters out by Billy Johnston and Gary Hughes Parramatta leading by six points to nil a try to Brad Williams as Taylor dummies and gives it to win coming through as a second forward Price ran as the decoy they're 15 meters out from the Canterbury line as it's played back to edge and off it goes to Sterling Sterling holds it up and finds Kenny and Kenny is nicely taken by Folks and Farrah, a sandwich tackle. Out it comes to Sterling, Sterling to Mayers. Mayers is held by Johnston, got it back to Edge. Now back to Sterling. Sterling uh, stands and finds Ray Price. Price is met, though, by Robinson. And that's tackle number five for Parramatta. Canterbury not sealing their tackles. They're not clamping them completely. As uh, Paul Taylor fires for drop goal, it's gone over the uh, dead ball line. And it'll come out for the 22 place kick by Canterbury Bankstown. Johnston giving it to Batiri. Bugden getting down and driving with that shoulder again. Played back to Billy Johnston, the Dally M hooker of the year. And this is Jeff Robinson. Robinson gets a pass down to Johnston. He took three defenders with him. Oh, gee, there's a clash in the back play with Ray Price and Billy Johnson. And Johnson is out cold. A penalty's gone to Parramatta. Now, they only caught the Price-Johnston incident out the corner of the uh, binoculars. There's Johnston. He's flat on his back. Um... I'm not in a position to comment on it because I didn't see it. All I saw was that. Now, Johnston wasn't in possession of the ball, and I'm not sure what inspired the tackle from Ray Price. The penalty has been given in the meantime to Parramatta. Touch judge report to referee Roberts, and Johnston says, heavens, what hit me? take it none of you guys saw it either following the ball were you 
That I, we, we've seen the replay, but I'm wondering what inspired the tackle. Did Johnston, in fact, uh, just unload the ball or what? I think he must have. Well, it's another great opportunity for Parramatta. They've had Canterbury under enormous pressure, and Canterbury have come up with a few fumbles and a few mistakes, and maybe that pressure is just starting to show. Here's Sharp now, playing it eight metres out from the Canterbury line. Played back to Peter Sterling, given to Stephen Edge, and Parramatta take it up with Price and Mayers, and Mayers is held by Coveney and put to ground, and he's right on the 10-metre line. As uh, the referee indicates second tackle, and Edge has knocked on a dummy half. Edge knocking on a dummy half. A disappointed Parramatta captain. Well, let off there for the uh, Bulldogs, and they win the scrum, and Mortimer goes open side, but he ran into Peter Wynn, who parcels him up. Steve plays it back to... It's gone to Gary Hughes, and now ooh, Tony Armstrong nearly really lost it there. And uh, there were a couple of Parramatta players sweating on the loose ball. It's now with Batiri. Batiri is taken by Kenny, uh, looking to unload, but now is it coming to the tackle. Plays it on the 22 from Johnston, a long ball to Mortimer. Now to Hughes, short ball to Farrah. Bugden lets go and brings him to ground. I still have the feeling that there's a lot of panic in the Canterbury play, and one of the things they're renowned for is their organisation. You know, their non-panic sort of play, but uh, that's not happening at the moment. Every every play of the ball's a new experience for them. Five tackles gone. It's fed back to Chris Mortimer, given now to brother Steve, who shoots for touch, and it's gone out on the full again. So that's twice Steve has fired for the touch line, and twice it's gone out on the full. So this is a Parramatta feed, Parramatta loose head, 15 metres out from the Canterbury line, with the Eels leading six points to nil. Sterling feeds it, wants it again. How the name of heavens he could have got a ball in there, I'll never know. Feet across everything. There it is, won by Parramatta. Sterling goes open side. He's away from Gary Hughes, but Farrah's got him, and Gary came from behind to bring him down. Michael Cronin's moved into dummy half. Ray Price runs the... No, he's not running as a decoy. He's gone himself to the blind, and he's tackled seven metres out from the Canterbury line. I'm sure that the Parramatta players have identified that Gary Hughes still isn't 100% fit, and they're running a lot of their attack at him. Peter Wynn delivering that pass with precision out to Eric Groth. Groth plays it back and finds Ella. Ella gets a pass away. Taylor has to dive for it. He was on the ground, and they still let him get up and go. And Taylor is tackled eight metres away from the Canterbury line. Playing it back to Steve Edge. Edge passes to Ray Price. Price gives it to Cronin. Cronin taken neatly around the legs by Billy Johnston. And that's the last tackle coming up now. Uh, Sterling firing it out to Steve Ella. Ella puts a little kick over. He'll regather. He does, and he'll score. Oh, Stephen Ella has put one down behind the uprights. A great try by Ella. That's Ella magic. Five four. Scored by well, Phil four. Blake would have been proud of this one. Last tackle. Ella had Kenny with him, a little dummy to him. Kicked over the head of folks, regathered, and then got away from Chris Mortimer, who should have had him, I feel, to send Parramatta to a 10 points to nil lead. A great little variation from Ella. Instead of the big bomb, the short kick, nobody at home. Chris Mortimer moves in. He was in the end goal, but on the wrong foot. And Ella completes a great try. An ominous sign for, I would think, the Manly players watching on. If this man does hit form, Steve Eller, and I must say that I haven't thought that he's been playing all that well in recent weeks. Not that Parramatta as a team has, but if Eller gets back into form and uh, Parra does play Manly in the grand final, if he's, um, if he's firing, then it's going to be certainly a great, uh, a great encounter. Cronin converts, Parramatta 12, Canterbury nil. Minor grades here today at the cricket ground. Thirds to the Saints, 27 to 14 over the Rabbits. Reserves to South 18 over the Saints, eight. Remembering that the last time these two sides met at the halftime break, it was 18 nil in favor of Parramatta. At the moment, 12 nil. The Canterbury badly needs some possession. They need to maintain that possession for a couple of sets of six tackles. Uh, we're probably looking at something like a replay of that semi-final clash, but if they are for mine to get back into this game, they're going to need to score before half-time. 
Well, we're having a major defensive problem, Graham, and the major major problem we're seeing from Canterbury, and we've also seen from other teams in the semi-finals, is a fundamental one, and it's just that first man in is not going well. Oh, going what a high. great pass from Kenny to Mayers. He's got players to choose from. He's still going. Now he finds Ella. He finds Cronin. He finds Ella. He's inside the last 10 metres. Here comes support. Peter Wynn has fallen over. Now he's over. It's a try. Peter Wynn has scored for Parramatta. Oh, what a rugby league try. What a rugby league beauty that was. Peter Wynn, what a happy man he'll be. Eric Roth did his part, but Paul Mayers, Paul Mayers was allowed to gallop as long as he wanted to. Back on the Parramatta 22, it started. Cronin's pass to Bugden, and then Bugden's to Kenny. Then Kenny's pass to Mayers, and Mayers, he took off outside the 45. Steve Mortimer didn't quite know what to do. Then he found Ella, then he found Cronin. Cronin gave it back to Ella, and Ella then took it down to the last 10 metres. Peter Wynn takes it, falls over the line, he can see it, and then he's up and in, in front of the Bradman stand. Brilliant football, again, bad defence by Canterbury. Let them stretch themselves out there on the right. Mayers does well here. Steve Mortimer had gone for Mayers. Chris Mortimer stepped inside, but great football by Ella. He's had a hand in the last two tries now, and what a brilliant piece of football. Wynn just managing to get back on his feet. Well, Gary Hughes was seen complaining there. Cronin, meantime, has converted. And uh, from right in front, that's how it looked, and easy for Cronin. Parramatta, 18, Canterbury, no score. So the kickoff, and we find Ray Price uh, still creating problems for Canterbury. Played back to Peter Wynn, and Wynn, with the, the smell of that try still in his nostrils, is uh, tackled 10 metres on his own side of the halfway. Sterling is held now. Uh, there was a doubt that he would play Sterling. He's out there doing his best, but I'm sure he's restricted. It doesn't up. make a tremendous difference to the Parramatta organisation in attack. Brad Williams picking up a Brett Kenny pass and Williams sprints down inside Canterbury's territory. He's tackled 35 metres out, Brad Williams. Playing it back to Steve Ella. Ella gives it to Sharp and Sharp is up to the 32 metre line. Pulled down by John Coveney and uh, Billy Johnston. Last tackle for Parramatta now. Sterling, Cronin. Cronin puts in a big kick down into the uh, Paddington Hill corner. Oh, Chris Mortimer's knocked on. A scrum to go down. 12 metres up. So this scoreline, 18-0, exactly the same now as it was when they met in the semi-final uh, at the half-time break, which is two minutes away. Fed by Sterling, it'll be a penalty to Canterbury for an incorrect feed. Differential penalty to Canterbury. Sterling, the offender. hard to imagine another replay of Canterbury storming home in the second half against a side like Parramatta. Uh, and as I said before, this is their last chance to really get back into the game. They must score before half-time. It's with Johnston, Steve Mortimer, long ball out to Gary Hughes and then to Chris Mortimer and he's tackled by Brett Kenny as it comes down to Gary Hughes from the play the ball, picked up by Farrah. Farrah gets uh, to Sterling, but Sterling's pulled him down. Mayers is up the top. It's a good run by Farrah taking play up to near the halfway line. Back to Steve Mortimer. Gary Hughes in possession. Now out wide is Michael Pittman, taken from behind by Peter Wynn. Play on the halfway line. With it is Peter Mortimer, now Gary Hughes. This is Taz Batiri. Batiri is uh, held about 35 metres out from the Parramatta line. It was at this uh, moment in their last clash that uh, Parramatta went into a period of relaxation um, and Canterbury came storming back in the second half. Steve Sharp now, playing it just outside his quarter line. Playing it back to Ray Price. This is Sterling. Now Cronin. Mayers out wide. Mayers is taken on the 22-metre line. Tony Armstrong, the defender. Cronin going open side. Now straightens, turns it back and finds Edge. Edge is out beyond the 32. Held there by Pittman and Armstrong. Away goes Mayers. And uh, he comes to Robinson. Gets it back to Taylor. Taylor is uh, about 10 metres short of halfway. Halftime siren, only seconds away. 
with Parramatta leading 18 points to nil. Played back to Edge and given to Sterling. Sterling runs at Robinson and then is taken by that player and by Batiri. Brad Williams has gone into dummy half and passes out to Paul Taylor. Taylor puts the kick up and uh, he's put them all on side. He rakes it back. It's with Sharp. Sharp gets it back to Bugden. Bugden, uh, well, he didn't know exactly what he was doing at that uh, precise moment. Jeff Bugden and the siren sounds. That's the end of the first half with Parramatta leading Canterbury Banks down by 18 points to nil. Now the stage is set for the start of the second half. Can the Bulldogs come back? Farrah kicks off. Ray Price takes it and comes out to the 32 metre line and uh, got through Billy Johnston's attempt at tackle. And it was left to Coveney and Pittman to make the tackle. Played back to Edge, Edge across the ground, no gain made, and uh, Bugden goes into dummy half as Johnston makes the tackle on his opposite number. Sterling calls it, Bugden runs with it, and he's up to the halfway line. And uh, Billy Johnston again called on to make the tackle, and I joke, he's made plenty of them. Played back to Edge, and Edge goes away from dummy half. Parramatta, I doubt that you're going to see too much fancy play from them. Uh, uppermost in their mind would be the similarity in this match and the last encounter and uh, they would have been I would think livened up and made aware of the fact that they went to sleep on it last time and I doubt that they'll be taking too many chances as we find Steve Mortimer coming up with uh, a loose ball and it's gone to Tony Armstrong Armstrong has herded back into the center of the ground gee that's been a good run by Armstrong he was cut down eventually by Peter Wynn it's played and gone back to Steve Mortimer. Now it's with Gary Hughes. This is uh, Chris Anderson across from his flank. Gave it back to Gary Hughes. Now it's gone to Folks. Folks draws the defence, gets it to Pittman, who beats Bugden but is pulled down by Taylor. And the uh, play is 12 metres into Parramatta's territory. Gary Hughes to Jeff Robinson, and Robinson is pulled down by Taylor. Johnston dummy half to Steve Mortimer. Back to Johnston. Up the centre goes Coveney, and he's met by Price Wynn and Bugden players in the center of the ground as uh, we find it coming out to Steve Mortimer Gary Hughes Andrew Farrah and uh, he's through edge he's through win and Mayers is there to make the tackle with Price and also Bugden that's the fifth tackle for Canterbury this will be a oh, I thought he was going to penalize them Farrah passes the ball and it's dived on by Paul Taylor in the meantime Ray Price was on the ground uh, injured as the ball is spread quickly by Parramatta. Kenny goes out to the showground side of the uh, ground. Brad Williams is tackled about five metres short of halfway. Williams playing it back to Cronin. Cronin to Sterling. Sterling to Sharp. Sharp to Ella. And Ella is uh, taken in the defence there. On the sideline, uh, with a microphone at his disposal, Manley and international second rower, Paul McCabe. What were your feelings, Paul, after 40 minutes? Oh, right. Uh, Parramatta have just been too strong. Uh, Canterbury have allowed them to start well. And uh, well, Canterbury are notably a slow starting team, as we saw the last time these two teams met. But they just haven't controlled. Michael Cranley's made a couple of breaks up the flanks, and they've capitalised on those breaks and gone on with it with a bit of shoddy defence from Canterbury. Hopefully Canterbury can get back in it, but uh, at this stage oh, I can't see it. This Parramatta team seems to be playing a hell of a lot better than they did last weekend, Paul. They are, mate, yeah. Well, I think we, we contain them pretty well defensive-wise, and uh, I think we'll be playing them in the grand final, and uh, I think we'll be able to do it again then. Thanks for talking to me, Paul. Thanks, Ray. That's Paul McCabe from Manly as Gary Hughes gets it to Chris Mortimer, the combination that we didn't see in the first half, working for the first time uh, early in the second half. It's out to Steve Mortimer, now to Peter, and Peter is uh, chased by Cronin and taken to ground by Cronin just outside the Parramatta 22. Steve Mortimer, Gary Hughes, Canterbury stretching the ball to the uh, extremities of the ground as Robinson is now brought down. He'll play it back to Johnston. Johnston gives it to Batiri, and he's held by Peter Wynn and Ray Price, who... Uh, must have got through a tremendous amount of tackles in the first uh, 40 minutes. The pass by Steve Mortimer, beautifully taken by Chris. He did very well to come up with that ball. Here's Steve Mortimer now, taking the punt uh, on the bomb. Sterling's underneath it, and he's put it down. There's a chance on. Dived on by Brett Kenny, who apparently came from an onside position. And Kenny to play it. 
10 metres out from his line. It's away to Cronin, on to Taylor. Taylor holds the pass up and is tackled 20 metres out. Here's Mayers now, bumping off one, standing and giving it back to Sharp, who gets it back to Taylor. Taylor's tackled, 32 out. And now on the sidelines, another manly player, Phil Sigsworth. Steve Ellers' form in the first half uh, might have come as an ominous sign for Manly. Uh, Phil, as Kenny gets the pass to Growth, Growth back to Kenny. Kenny uh, stands, gets a pass away, but it's in a touch. Oh, nail-biting stuff. Now back to Phil Sigsworth, who I had asked a question of. Um, Steve Ella seems to have recaptured some of his uh, form, Phil. Yes, Ray, he's, uh, he's having a great game out there, but then you look right through the Parramatta side and the whole side's playing well. But you find a lot of the gaps have been made down the flanks and Steve Ella's had a big part of it. Cronin's also uh, having a big one. Well, Mick's a, a big-time player and he's, he's just reveling in the going out there. Thank you, Phil, for joining us today. Thanks, Ray. That's Chris Mortimer tackled now. About uh, 15 metres on the Canterbury side of the halfway as uh, Pittman tries to make the break but Mayers and Taylor pull him down and it's played back to Johnston now to Mortimer a cutout pass to Robinson Bugden goes at him he gets away from Bugden stands in the tackle of Kenny gets it to Anderson he's taken by Groth and Sharp and it's Canterbury to play it uh, just a couple of metres on their side of halfway Steve Mortimer now to Gary Hughes and there's a gap out there Folks has run into it he is chased and caught by Brett Kenny and Folks it is who's going to play it Back to Johnston, they keep up the wrap to the right. Gary Hughes, taken by Peter Sterling, and put to ground. 12 metres into Parramatta's area. Played back to Farrah. Farrah to Steve Mortimer. Reverses the point of the attack to Coveney, who puts a kick up. Taylor's there, takes it easily. No pressure. Outside the 22, and Coveney's got him. Gets the pass to Ray Price. A wide ball out to Sharp. Sharp comes to Peter Mortimer. Throws a dummy and then goes to ground on the 22 line. Played ahead by Sharp, and he's uh, gained another 10 metres. Well, Max Krilich, 18-0. Uh, <laughs> it's quite a coincidence, isn't it, that these two sides would have a similar scoreline at half-time? Yes, it is a coincidence, but the thing is they're playing superior football, Ray, as they did two weeks ago and as uh, Parra did last year against East. I think uh, if they're going to get out of it, Stevie Mortimer must try a little chip even on the first tackle to... To, to break him up, Paul Taylor's in the line and uh, there's no back, there, there's no one back there early, so he's just got to start breaking him up a little bit. Max Krillich on our commentary team for the finals and of course with us next Sunday for the grand final. And we're mounting a very big coverage of the entire day if it's live to air, of course. And uh, we'll be taking you through with a very big sporting program from 9.30 next Sunday morning played by Paul Taylor on the halfway. It's back to Peter Sterling, who kicks in general play, and chasing it is Chris Mortimer. And it's getting over towards the touchline. Chris has it now and comes outside the try line. And Sterling is up there to make the tackle. So Chris Mortimer to play it, 15 metres out from his line. Chris Anderson passes to Steve Mortimer, now to Gary Hughes. This man is Tony Armstrong, and taken by Ella, losing a, a shoe as he uh, is tackled. Now it's uh, Andrew Farrah running at Stephen Sharp, and Sharp makes the tackle. Price coming over the top, and Farrah now plays it back to Johnston. Johnston gives it to Folks, and oh, Peter Wynn went in with a, a very hard tackle down low. Edge was up the top, and now it's played and gone to Mortimer, switching it back to the blind side. And this man is uh, Michael Pittman, who's pulled down by Price and by Sharp. Five tackles gone for the Bulldogs. It's fed back now for the kick to Chris Mortimer. Not a good pass to him. And uh, as a result, a fairly shallow kick. And Paul Taylor is all hit heavily by Folks. Sterling was there, luckily for Parramatta. Well, that and was a shallow kick by Mortimer because it was a left-footed kick. He never got the ball on the right side. Uh, kicked the ball left-footed, so he showed that he is versatile. Yes, and there should have been a lot more defence up there with Steve uh, Folks to capitalise on that loose ball. So it's not the first time we've seen Steve Folks make a tackle and uh, the player coughing up the ball. Graham Wynn will uh, vouch for that. Cronin allowed to stand and he, he got the pass to Brad Williams and he's tackled by Billy Johnston. Players about 12 metres into Canterbury's area with Parramatta continuing to lead by 18 points to nil. Out to Sterling now to Cronin. A cutout pass goes to Ella. The pass to Groth looked forward to me. Groth is steaming down the touch line and he's gone into touch. 11 metres out. 
this was the replay as Cronin cut out Kenny. It was this pass from Ella that I thought was forward, and I still think it was. Gross made this long run down the touchline before going into touch, 11 metres out from the Canterbury line. Penalty to Canterbury. Penalty to Canterbury. He got uh, the Parramatta pack for screwing the scrum. Farrah taking the line kick. Ten minutes gone in the second half. Yes, and that signals desperation stakes. Uh, Canterbury well behind the eight ball. Uh, we re reportedly, they were in a locked uh, training session yesterday uh, to practice some new moves. And if those new moves were working at training, now is the time to search for them. Well, Canterbury now with uh, the ball being played by Batiri, and it's been passed to Pittman. Pittman taken by a three-man Parramatta tackle. Mears, Sharp and Wynn. And now it's with Coveney. Coveney runs straight at Sterling. Wynn comes in to help the, the little halfback, and John Coveney plays it right in the centre of the ground. It's out to Gary Hughes. Robinson goes right. Chris Mortimer comes off his 5'8 beautifully, takes it down to the 32, and oh, geez, legs got buckled up, uh, buckled up under the tackle. He's OK. In fact, the Parramatta player is injured. It's out to Steve Mortimer. Now to Gary Hughes. He runs to Steve Ella, then gets... Oh, Kenny's intercepted. Kenny has turned defence into attack. And he's brought down about 12 metres on his side of the halfway. Played back to Cronin, given to Wynn. And Wynn is out of the tackle of Coveney and is taken by Anderson. The score may be 18-0 and Canterbury is still searching for that try to set him on the path to recovery. Uh, but it's uh, you know, just as noticeable that uh, Parramatta, even with that lead, there's a lot of gaps appearing in their own defence. Taylor. Getting up to play it. Given to Sterling. Now to Bugden. Bugged and taken by Folks and Batiri. Crowd here at the cricket ground today. Uh, not as big as last week, 27,726. On the halfway line, we return to the play and the knock on by Peter Sterling. And the scrum will be fed by the Canterbury half. One by Canterbury and Mortimer is um, tackled by um, Sterling and a penalty goes to the Canterbury side. Probably saying we need all the help we can. Yeah, thanks very much for that gesture. So the line kick has found touch about 18 metres out from the Parramatta line. 13 minute marker. Second half, Johnston to Batiri and uh, he's held by Sharp and Wynn and also by Mayers. Very close to the Parramatta line. Here's Robinson. Robinson pulled down by Sharp. It was Robinson who started the Canterbury resurgence. Uh, in their last encounter, Chris Mortimer taken heavily there by Paul Taylor and Ray Price as uh, it's played back and uh, it's Canterbury within five metres of the line as Billy Johnston plays it. Back to Steve Mortimer who runs and passes to Gary Hughes who kicks and Sterling has dived on the ball for Parramatta. Just out from the line. The most obvious thing so far in this game is that as as far as Canterbury Banks down are concerned, they're just not supporting one another, whether it be attack or defence, they're just not prepared to help. Yes, it's a bad habit they've fallen into, I think, over the last few weeks, where the, the team is sitting back and waiting for Steve Mortimer or Gary Hughes to set play up for something. They've got to start to, to take it between their own teeth and really set sail for that line and support each other with the ball, especially the likes of Mick Pittman and Jeff Robinson. Parramatta now working it out from inside their own 22. Cronin continues to stand and offload. Mayers away from Anderson outside the 22. I think he's the best front row or second row prospect that we've seen probably in a decade, this kid, Paul Mayers. Well, most people at Parramatta maintain that he is as good as Bob O'Reilly. He was at the same age. And uh, here's Peter Wynn, tackled about 30 metres out from the line. That's tackle number five as it's passed from edge to Sterling and Sterling puts it 
down towards the touchline in front of the Brawongal stand, but Chris Mortimer has got it covered. Just took a look over his shoulder to make sure his feet hadn't gone over the touchline, and Ray Price comes up and makes the tackle. And that was something interesting too. Peter Sterling was one of the first men up on chase, and uh, before the game there was a big injury doubt on Sterling, but uh, well, there's no problems with him now. You know, he's playing a great game for Parramatta. There's a chance on here for Canterbury. I was going to say if Andrew Farrer could have got that ball away, Tony Armstrong had plenty of vacant ground in front of him. But uh, he was turned back in field. Farrah, Parramatta 18, Canterbury no score. Gary Hughes. Um, Peter Wynn is going in trying to make shoulder hits. And uh, a couple of times he's missed completely, Wynn. He'd be better off going in trying to make uh, the orthodox tackle. It's out to Paul Taylor. Now to Paul Mayers. Peter Sterling, Michael Cronin. Cronin gets a pass away to Kenny. Kenny calls growth inside. Throws the dummy. Gets it inside now. And Peter Mortimer has taken it into touch. Scrum 20 metres out from the Canterbury line. It'll be a Parramatta feed and a Parramatta loose head. Well, Kenny tried to bamboozle the defence. He finished up paying the penalty. He got growth inside, but he just left it too late. And you might have known who was coming across in cover for Canterbury. Steve Folks. We'll never forget that. Oh, tremendous tackle he made at Belmore against this very side. A penalty to Parramatta. Penalty to Parramatta. He's got Johnston for a loose arm. Differential to Parramatta. This will see Cronin fine touch about 10 metres out. They won't want to be any closer than 10 metres out to keep that space between themselves and defence to put on a set play. the Cronin kick he well, he's overdone it completely I would think no worries they'll probably put the play on the second tackle as uh, growth comes off Sterling and growth is tackled a meter out from the line you can look for something that's uh, been rehearsed from Parramatta here blindside to Sharp he pirouettes and takes the tackle Sharp the well, Canterbury is certainly stretched to the left if Parramatta decide to move the ball Sharp now Having another go at playing it. Edge gives it out. Mayers has gone without it. Kenny's got it. And he's ruled a knock-on. Referee Roberts ruling a knock-on. The crowd giving him a raspberry. As far as they're concerned, it went behind Paul Mayers, who failed to take it. Here it was again. And, uh, well, you be the judge. But it certainly looked as though it uh, could have well been ruled as play on. And Canterbury's come up with it now. Steve Mortimer tackle by Ray Price and Peter Wynn first tackle for the Bulldogs they're down on their own line as Gary Hughes gives it to Pittman and uh, he's heading for the ground under the tackle of Kenny and Mayers ball played back to Peter Mortimer given to Tony Armstrong and he tries to make the split but Sterling and Price close it out now to Steve Mortimer Gary Hughes in possession long ball out to Folks and now to Andrew Farrar Farrar taken by Sharp and growth. And that's an example of one of the great attractions that Parramatta have. Canterbury Bankstown had enough numbers then to make a break, but it was nullified by the mobility of the, uh, of the Parramatta forward, such as Sharp, who came across in cover. Played by Batiri on number five. It's with Steve Mortimer. Gets a kick in, looking for the touchline. Taylor's got it covered. And here comes the little man, out from the quarter line, over the 32, and is taken by Armstrong. The Eels, leading by 18 points to nil as the second half has been going now for 18 minutes. Played by Wynn. Now it's with Mayers. Mayers taken by Folks. About uh, eight metres on his side of the halfway. Sharp. Parramatta playing kill type football. In other words, shutting it down. Nothing too fancy as uh, we find Sterling feeding it back to Cronin. Cronin gets the kick in. That's going to find touch from Cronin. A good kick, crossing the touch line, just inside the quarter. Break arena replay of Michael Cronin in action. And again, a reminder that uh, next Sunday, if we're live to air, we are mounting a sports extravaganza for you here on Channel 10 right through from 9.30 in the morning and uh, we'll have cameras all over the place as Canterbury come up with this penalty 
and that's not for that's against Parramatta for not arching uh, horizontal to the ground penalties 9-6 to the Bulldogs Andrew Farrah's line kick is a good one finding at five meters on his side of the halfway the Canterbury's chances becoming more and more remote as the clock inevitably works on 20 minutes gone now second half and still 18 nil folks working with Robinson taken by Wynn out of his tackle taken by Bugden and uh, big Jeff Robinson to play it playing it back to Chris Anderson now to Steve Mortimer Gary Hughes short ball beautiful pass in fact and uh, the ball put down by Pittman stretched quickly by Parramatta's Ray Price to Steve Eller and Ella it is to play it as Canterbury reorganize themselves Sharp has worked tremendously hard in this game Mark Hughes and uh, Paul Langmack taking the field for Canterbury Mark of course retires this year so this will be the way it's looking the last time we're going to see Mark Hughes in the blue and white colors on the rugby league field Cronin giving it inside to Bugden Bugden was held by the Canterbury defense they didn't seem as though they wanted to be all that aggressive in the tackle though yes that's been the damaging pass for Canterbury all day that inside ball Canterbury's defense not moving up Sterling's kick ahead Kenny is chasing Armstrong is two Taylor's after it as well and Armstrong is caught by Taylor there's the two of them a dummy half and uh, marker Taylor and Sterling and the similarity is quite incredible well not only are they look alike they play alike they're both scavenging type of players that do a lot of tidying up they're prepared to get into the into the front line of defense and work they can take the first pass off the ruck there two good footballers to have in your side anderson's pass knocked down by Parramatta. now what the referee's going to rule knock-ons against both and there go the replacements Now, in the back play, a Parramatta player is receiving attention. It's Jeff Bugden. Here's a replay of the incident, which saw both sides knock on. Well, I rather disagree. I thought it was play on to Canterbury. Remember, it was an intercept that brought the ball back to Parramatta in the first instance. Pittman and Batiri off for Canterbury. Now, Bugden getting to his feet. And he's, he's coming off, Bugden. He's done a shoulder. Mayers received some attention. Mayers is going to have to go into the front row for this scrum. Yes, well, we've already seen that Steve Sharp has uh, moved into the front row, and uh, well, now uh, they've made another change with Mayers in the front row, and Jerd's finally coming onto the paddock, and I'm sure he'll do a good job. Out to Gary Hughes, and now to Chris Mortimer, but uh, making the tackle was Paul Taylor as uh, Stan Jerd takes the field. He's wearing jumper number 16, so Parramatta have lost uh, two front rowers, Hilditch and Bugden. And this is Mark Hughes, with that right knee heavily taped, and he's taken the ground in a three-man Parramatta tackle. Johnston giving it to Steve Mortimer, the cutout ball to Peter Mortimer. Mayers and Sterling make this tackle. Or well, Mayers and Sharp, I should say, and now it's with Robinson. Jerd going in, Robinson coming off on top of that encounter. Peter Mortimer getting a pass out to Andrew Farrer. Greg Brentnell warming up on the sidelines for Canterbury. Andrew Farrer, short ball for Tony Armstrong. Back into the centre of the ground, finds Paul Langmack. Now he finds Armstrong. Armstrong looking for support. Pull down on number five. Parramatta still getting back into position. Billy Johnston runs with it, kicks and finds Kenny. And Kenny now comes outside the 22 and he, oh he's gone through a couple of paper-like attempts at tackle Kenny he's taken play back inside Canterbury's territory Bugden with his uh, arm immediately into that uh, hastily made sling so the composition of Parramatta's side for next Sunday if they make it and it's looking that way isn't it uh, is anybody's guess at this stage, but Jerd and Wynn are out there playing now, and they, by the looks of it, are going to finish up with a grand final jumper. Greg Brentnell has taken the field. P 
Peter Mortimer is off. This is Andrew Farrar standing, trying to resist the tackle. Did so. Uh, in fact, everybody has told us how Farrar uh, looks so much like Michael Cronin, and as he stood in that tackle and offloaded it, uh, you could be forgiven for thinking that, couldn't you? Here's Brentnell coming onto it. P2. Greg retires this year, and we're probably watching him at the Sydney Cricket Ground as a player for the last time. Mark Hughes, Steve Sharp's made the tackle, and Mark to play the ball in the centre of the ground. It's come out to Gary Hughes. Gary met by Peter Wynn and tidied up, and that's the fourth tackle for Canterbury. It's all very well to talk in hindsight, but I'm sure if Canterbury Bankstown were having their time again, they'd start with Greg Brentley in this game. I know that I would. Five tackles gone for the Bulldogs. Steve Mortimer elects to run it, passes to Folks. Folks gets it onto the left boot, getting underneath it is Mares. There's no call from Parramatta. Sharp stayed on the ground and came up with the uh, with the result, and he'll play at nine metres out from the Parramatta line. Out now to Cronin. This is Growth. Growth brought down by Johnston and by John Coveney. Played back to Sterling, given to Jurd. And Jurd is pulled down around the legs by Paul Langmack. Cronin. One of the few times Canterbury found themselves in the Parramatta 22. Let's see if they can apply the pressure and make the Eels come up with the mistakes. Mayers running himself on a narrow blind. He's made a gain of about 12 metres. Cronin's gone in to feed the ball out from the play the ball to Sterling. Sterling puts up what I call a midfield bomb and Taylor gets under it and takes it on the full, gives it to Kenny, the stretch is on, Growth couldn't take it and just as well he couldn't for Canterbury because the big man would have been off on a long run. I thought it was an interesting point you just made, Ray, about Mick Cronin coming into one off the ruck for Parramatta. In the last few weeks he's done that a lot, he's gone in to help organise the forwards and uh, I think he's done a very good job at it. Well, he's going to have to continue to play like a forward uh, if it is to be the grand final next week because uh, of those possible bad injuries to Ronnie Hildich and uh, Jeff Bugman. Steve Mortimer. Now Coveney. Coveney got over the top of Price, who went in for the throw using the legs and was made to miss badly. It's with Mortimer. Now Gary Hughes switching it back to the centre of his fullback, Brentnell. And Brentnell is pulled down. 30 metres up. Manly players uh, in the stands watching this clash to see who their opponents are going to be next to Sunday. Steve Eller dives on the loose ball. Very much it looks like it's going to be the grand final as predicted as early as grand final day 1982. Manly and Parramatta and that is going to be one blockbuster of a game of rugby league. Uh, Max you agree with that prognostication, I suppose? Oh, yes, it's uh, Parramatta some playing some excellent football here, Ray. It's, uh, I would have uh, brought uh, the replacements on a little bit earlier than this. In fact, I would have uh, uh, brought them on at half time. The, the other guys showed they couldn't match the Parramatta guys, and I would have made the change. Here's Peter Wynn making a run down the centre, taken off him by Steve Mortimer, and he's tackled by Peter Wynn. Max, if you're having your time again, or if Canary were having their time again, do you think they'd start with Greg Brentwood in the side? Oh, yes, you'd have to. I, I, I think uh, he is a class football, and already he's become involved in the match, and uh, they're showing some uh, rewards out of it. You know, he is getting in, involved in the play, which uh, some of the other guys haven't been doing, and it uh, just shows you know, the experience and the class of a player in the big game. Gary Hughes holding back a pass before being tackled by Ella and Wynn. Parramatta, 18. Canterbury, no score. And play is down on the Parramatta 22 line. Played by Mark Hughes, back to Paul Langmack. He runs onto the blind side, and Price again makes the tackle. Mark Hughes, long ball to Gary Hughes. Now to Steve Mortimer, infielder for Chris Mortimer. And he's taken by Sterling and Jurd. Played back to Johnston, given to Mortimer, cut out. Now it's gone to Brentnell. He puts up the bomb, Brentnell, the Wagga combination of Mortimer and Brentnell. Brentnell's got the ball and has scored. Brentnell is in to score for Canterbury Bankstown. Parramatta went to sleep on this. Greg Brentnell, the try scorer, 
Yes, I think you'll see here, Brentnell puts the bomb up, allowing himself enough momentum to try and leap up and get up as high as he can, but uh, he finds that he doesn't have to. The Parramatta players all leave it to each other, and Brentnell really not le having to leave the ground at all. And to his surprise, once you see him catch the ball here, there's, a, there's an unbelievably huge gap, all too easy. So Greg Brentnell picks up the first points of the match for Canterbury. 12 minutes of the game remaining. The Wagga combination, as I refer to it. Of course, they first came to the television cameras at Leichhardt back in 74-75 in the Amco Cup that was then being played. Tony Armstrong with a kick from about 15 metres in from the showground touchline. I trust you're keeping your eyes glued to the screen in case your name pops up for $1,000 or a P&O cruise. The next weekend during the grand final, we'll be drawing out the name of the winner of the Toyota Tarago. The main prize in the $50,000 of giveaways that we've had through the final series. Had any luck in that, Bill? No, I haven't so far, but I'll be watching closely tonight. Tony Armstrong's kick now. 18-4 currently. Hits it. And it's getting away. No goal. So the scoreline. Parramatta leading Canterbury. 18-4. Gary Martini on the sideline that man sitting next to Ralph Richards as you can see with the two-way in contact all the time with Jack Gibson Cronin kicking off. Canterbury needing to score again very quickly. Yes, and this is where Stevie Mortimer comes into his own. Look for him to dash into dummy half as he did in late in that uh, second half of the semi final and try and take off from there and control the game. Bill, if you were sending messages out to the centre at this stage, um, in view of what Graham just said, would you be dropping maybe a Peter Sterling back out of that front line to play between full back and uh, straight line defence? No, I don't think I'd change my pattern of play at all, Ray. I think I'd be preparing the team for next week and I'd stay conti say continue doing exactly what you're doing and keep doing it well. Chris Anderson going back in field. That'll be play on. Growth has come up with it for Parramatta. It was raked back by Edge and Growth plays it to him. Edge just settles it. He doesn't do anything flash Stephen Edge, but uh, his tackle counts this year have been astronomical. As we find Jurd taking it up into the Canterbury forwards, he's met by Robinson and Langmack. Incidentally, talking of uh, Paul, a product of Fairfield Patrician Brothers, um, reminds me of the junior game here next uh, Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, James Cook High playing Fairfield Patrician, isn't it? Yes, it's the uh, it's the big shootout. Uh, James Cook, of course, won the. Uh, won the uh, CHS competition while the Commonwealth Bank Cup was won by the Christian Brothers and this is the, uh, the decider to we'll see who's the champion schoolboy team. So as that was all happening, Steve Ella went within an ace of uh, pulling off another try off the kick. And uh, I think you'll find that touch judge, Graham, has ruled that he had his feet on the line, Steve Ella, when he touched that ball. If he had his feet on the line, it would then be deemed to have come off the Canterbury players. Uh, but uh, well quite obviously that's how he has seen it as uh, Canterbury are forced into the line dropout situation here goes big Eric Growth he's got rid of one he's bumped off a second and there goes Eric inside the 22 I, I'm blade if I know how you'd try and stop him other than hit him over the head with a hammer or something here's Sharp and uh, again oh, he's in a lot of pain there uh, now the Canterbury player injured Oh, there's two players injured. There's a Canterbury player and Growth's done his knee. Growth's done his knee and that's Billy Johnson who's down injured for Canterbury. Well, if Growth's done that left knee, Parramatta's penalty in winning this match today has taken on huge proportions. Sterling throws the dummy to the, the decoy runaround and then Kenny gives it to Price and Price uh, ambles out of a tackle before giving it to the zip-zip man and Ella is tackled. 
about eight metres out from the Canterbury line. Yes, Canterbury is still grappling in tackles and not making sure of their man with an effective first up low tackle. Peter Wynn brought down on tackle number five. Growth and Johnston both on their feet now as Edge passes to Sterling. Sterling puts the bomb up. It'll go over the dead ball line. And it'll come out to the Canterbury 22 for the place kick restart. Will Harris, you'll recall, scored uh, Parramatta's final try against Canterbury in the semi-final. That's him coming onto the field now. Well, the more you see of this season, the more it's almost like a story that we've read before. Parramatta going down to Manly, 20 points to nil in the semi-final last year, coming out and whacking the Eagles in the grand final. Um, this match today having a very similar style to the semi-final between these two sides. Parramatta beaten by Manly last weekend. So it's, it's going to be a full house here next Sunday, that's for sure. And there'll be people queued for a long, long time before the gates open. Brad Williams kicks it ahead. It's still in the field of play, but now in touch. And a scrum, eight metres up from the Canterbury line. Michael Cronin has been given an early shower. I'm positive that is a reward from Jack Gibson acknowledging the performance from Cronin in this match today. Yes, well, two of Parramatta's most experienced players, Mick Cronin and Ray Price, have been their stars today, and they've, they've really led the younger fellows on, shown the way in what was going to be a very tough encounter. Fed by Mortimer and won by Canterbury. It's with Hughes. Brentnell makes the extra man into the back line, but he lost it when tackled. Parramatta Zella has come up with it. 10 metres out from the Canterbury line. Will Harris passes to Taylor, to Price, and Mayers. Oh, the big fellow did well to take that. And he's um, taken to ground by Chris Mortimer and Andrew Farrer. It's uh, to be played by Paul Mayers. Back to Ray Price. Price gets around one and then takes play within five metres of the Canterbury line. And four tackles have gone, three tackles have gone for Parramatta. Sharp from dummy half tries to bump his way through the Canterbury defence. But it's um, not there at the moment, the gap that Parramatta are, are looking for. Wynn gives it to Kenny. Kenny's taken five metres out. Sterling will drop in behind the ruck and probably put it up here, or they may, they may use the grub. It's across to Sterling now. There goes the bomb. Brentnell's under it. Brentnell's uh, it's gone over the dead ball line on the full. And a 22-place kick again to restart. Here's the kick by Sterling on your Rank Arena replay. Brentnell cool as a cucumber. Always knowing where he had the dead ball line in relation to himself and keeping his eyes on the ball at the same time. Champion fullback Greg Brentnell. In fact, the game losing two of its best fullbacks in Edie and Brentnell this year. Mortimer, Gary Hughes, met by Peter Sterling and taken to ground. It's with Mark Hughes now. And, uh, Gary Martini going over to the touchline to take the field. And a penalty goes to Canterbury. For stealing the ball against uh, the Eels. And Martini has gone on. And it's Peter Sterling who's coming off. Is it? No, it's Brett Kenny who's coming off. Dying minutes, I know, but uh, if anything, justice appears to have uh, been recorded here in the fact that uh, the most, two most consistent sides of the, of the season will play in the grand final. Knock on, ruled by the referee and a scrum just on the Canterbury side of the halfway. Inside the last five minutes, 18 points to four in favour of the Eels. Sterling works it. Won by Parramatta by Joe. That ball did come out behind and between the inside feet of the second rowers. You better you drop sound as if you're shocked. I am shocked. <laughs> I am totally shocked. We better put that one down. Uh, that scrum for the record. And that's Gary Martini tackled now. 
Dummy half, Peter Wynn picked up a try, came on to replace the injured Ron Hildage, who made a huge tackle after about 10 minutes of the game and uh, appeared to do a collarbone. Martini. Well, as, as well as the players, I'm sure there's one other person on the field that's very happy today, and that'll be the referee, uh, Kevin Roberts. He's had, a, he's had a good performance, and I think that was all that was necessary for him today to, to get his first grand final next week. Parramatta attacking just outside the 22. Win around the back door to Jurd, then down to Price. Price gallops up to the quarter, beats Robinson, taken by Mark Hughes. Ball has been lost by Price, I do believe, and Steve Mortimer may have possession. He has, and he plays it back to Billy Johnston. The ball goes to Gary Hughes, now to Greg Brentnell. Brentnell comes to the 22 line and is tackled by Sharp and Martini. Gary Hughes again. Now Paul Langmack. Taken by Wynn and Jurd. Steve Mortimer. Cut out pass over to Chris Mortimer. Will Harris playing in jumper 24, making the tackle. With the timepiece showing just outside two minutes to go. Two minutes away from Parramatta officially entering the 1983 grand final to play men. Ball played by Chris Anderson. And it's with Gary Hughes, floats the pass out to Armstrong, immediately back in field. Oh, gee, that was a stupid pass back in field by Andrew Farrer, although I suppose with this scoreline looking at you, uh, you've got to try something, but uh, he immediately has set Parramatta back on an attacking path. Well, he simply had nothing to lose, doesn't he? Paul Mayers to play it when he gets to his feet. And it looks like he might have damaged uh, an ankle, but... It's with Peter Wynn now in the centre of the ground. Played back to Sharp. And he's up to the quarter line. Robinson coming over the top. And that man underneath was um, Paul Langmack. A kick by Ella. And Jurd's going through. Bretnell takes it. And is tackled by Jurd. Played back to Steve Mortimer. He fires a pass out wide to brother Chris and now it's with Folks and Price is across in cover. Anderson, Mortimer, Hughes, another Hughes, Mark this time. Now Brentman crosses the quarter, finds Farrah. The pass to Armstrong has been knocked on and a scrum will go down. Put it in. The edge has gone down in the scrum. Canterbury's won it anyway. From Mortimer to Hughes. Hughes taken by Ella, Taylor and Martini. And away it comes now for Paul Langmack to take it to the halfway line. Throws the pass in desperation. Steve Ella picks it up. Ella's taken it back down to the Canterbury 22 line. As the siren sounds in the background, the grand final that just about everybody was predicting is now to be. Manly and Parramatta here at the cricket ground next Sunday. Parramatta arriving there today with an 18 points to four victory. Tries by Williams, Ella and Wynn. Cronin three goals. For Canterbury, a try by Greg Brentnell. 18 points to four, the final scoreline in favour of Parramatta.